Okay, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Goodness, that's a loud mic. And so to my uh, next guest. Johnny Thunders described her as the smartest chick I've ever met. Morrissey, with very Morrissey inflection, has said, I love your Dulls and Thunders books. Priceless information for one such as I, and I'm so glad that you did them. And Peter Doherty has said, Watch Nina Wright, she riots. She is a true literary rock and roller, and it gives me the greatest pleasure to introduce Nina Antonio. Hold on, we've got kind of. Um, Have we got tangled? No, we've got sort of things in front of us somewhere. I'll move that back for you in a moment. Sorry, this is the running commentary on what I'm doing. Don't take my music stand away. <laughs> I like your music stand. It's very rock and roll. Thank you. Right, we are tangled. Hold on. You see, normally I do this with one microphone and the guest has to sit on my lap. <laughs> Nina said no. But that doesn't mean... <laughs> the mark of a true rock and roller. So, uh, we must start with Johnny Thunders, mustn't we? And uh, just, I wasn't entirely sure that everyone would be f familiar with who Thunders was. So for anyone unfamiliar, here's a, a brief resume. He was a singer, songwriter, guitarist, who in 1970, uh, in New York, met and joined guitarist and bass guitarist Arthur Kane in a band called Actress. Uh, which, when the lineup changed to include David Johansson, Sylvan Sylvain, and Billy Mercia, became the legendary band New York Dolls. Sorry, I realize we've, we've got our backs to you over there. Um, but after, Mercia, tragic, tr after Mercia's tragic early death, which is memorialized in the David Bowie song on Aladdin's Sane, Time, uh, with the lyric, Time in Quaaludes and Red Wine, demanding Billy Dolls and other friends of mine, uh, Jerry Nolan became the drummer. Then when Malcolm McLaren began managing them and supplying them with clothes from Too Fast to Live, Too Young to Die, uh, which was the second incarnation of his famous shops with Vivian Westwood at 430 Kings Road, uh, they became a prototype of what McLaren would later do with uh, the Sex Pistols. With whom, Johnny Thunders having left the New York Dolls with Jerry Nolan to form Johnny Thunders and the Heartbreakers, would tour along with The Clash and uh, The Damned on the now legendary Anarchy Tour. So Nina, you met and became close friends with Thunders between 1982 and 1987 during the writing in Cold Blood, um, which we should say your book's been in print for 25 years now, um, and is something of a cult classic. So this is the longest preamble, but I just wanted to finish on the last bit, is that two and a half weeks ago on the 21st anniversary of his death in 1991, you posted a memorial on Facebook which began, Some People Change Your Life Forever. JT did that for me. I wondered if you could collaborate, elaborate on that. Um, I think it was because when I approached him to write his biography, I mean, the, the biggest thing I'd done at that point is write for fanzines. I, I didn't have, have a degree, and I barely scraped through my O-levels, but I had a feeling for rock and roll, and I handed him some notes that I'd written, and, and he said, well, why don't we give this a go? And that's how the journey began. I mean, I sort of... I look at modern life today and there seems to be so many barriers for people getting things through to the arts if they don't come through from a position of privilege. And one of the things that I appreciate about Johnny and about punk is that if you were good enough, you could do it and you could make it in the more avenues. But I'm very grateful to Guy tonight for putting this show on. Enough. Um, you previously said to me that your biography of Thunders marked the beginning of an off-kilter journey uh, that's transcended the boundaries of rock journalism. Because um, not only have you now written a sort of collection of outsider literature, your subsequent <coughs> books include the uh, acclaimed biographies of the New York Dolls, um, Peter Perrett, who is the front man of The Only Ones, which uh, are probably best known for their hit, Another Girl, Another Planet, and uh, your glam memoir, The Prettiest Star, Whatever Happened to Brent Smiley. Um, what draws you to your subjects and uh, and how exactly has that off-kilter journey manifested itself? Um, I didn't start out having an off-kilter journey. <laughs> Life just sort of blew me that way. But I think that it was, it was more that I've always been interested in subjects outside of, 
of the mainstream and artists that just get on with what they're doing, truly creative people. But the strange thing is that their legacy seems to endure for decades after. You know, I hear from people that go, I read this book or that book 10, 20 years ago, and it's one of my favorites, and it's still on my bookshelf, and that means an awful lot. And your latest project is a book called Jeunesse Brûlée, which is a fantastic title, translating as Burned Youth. Um, I'm wondering where the title comes from and, and what the focus of the book is. Oh, it was, it was a phrase I read that Anita Pallenberg used, and she was describing the actress Michelle Breton, whose one film was performance, and she made that film, she's brilliant in it, and then she vanished forever, and it was about trying to find out what had happened to Michelle. The book also contains um, stories on Peter Doherty and Nico and Nancy Spongen, and they're all people who've had their own off-kilter journeys one way or another. No, absolutely. And, uh, and so, other projects moving forward, I mean, for the reading you're about to do, you're going to be accompanied by Dead Cats, Jerome Alexander. He's um, behind the curtain He's now. behind the curtain. <laughs> he will emerge. I can feel him behind the curtain. Uh, with whom you're, you're planning a music-backed spoken word album, I think. and. Uh, Plus the two of you have recently been filming? Yeah, we were in a film with the, um, made by the Australian director Richard Walsencroft and the film is based on Yeats's poem, The Second Coming. So we're running around Bonds, Common, Jerome and I doing Hymn to Pan, um, which was a great experience in the snow. And Jerome also did some scene to Peter Doherty as well. So it was, it was more about the drawing on the old spirits of Albion, which we hope to do tonight. Absolutely. We should also say that Peter's written the yes, preface he's written to your preface to to as well. Okay, I think enough chat. We should let you get on and uh, do what you do best. Uh, Mr. Demon Lover, where are you? There he is. Oh my word. Yeah. Rock and roll. Yeah. Yeah.